Selective precipitation. What is selective precipitation? Selective precipitation is a technique of separating ions in an aqueous solution by using reagents that precipitates one of the ions at a given time, taking advantage of the knowledge of solubility product or KSP values. Before we proceed, it would be a good idea to review the condition required for precipitation of an ionic compound from its aqueous solution. In the previous lesson, we had learned that the precipitation of an ionic compound from its solution will only take place if the ion product of the compound is greater than the solubility product, or we can call it the trial ion product should be greater than solubility product or written as QSP is greater than KSP. This is very similar to QC and KC, which you learned earlier when you studied Le Chatelier's principle. Here is an example problem. Let's say I have a beaker of aqueous solution of aluminum nitrate and zinc nitrate mixture. I want to separate the aluminum ions from the zinc ions as different compounds. This is what we can do. Identify a reagent that can precipitate either one or both of the ions, but the condition is that they should both have different KSP values for the compounds. I'm going to try to separate them as hydroxides. Aluminum hydroxide and zinc hydroxide can easily form. KSP of aluminum hydroxide is 3.0 into 10 to the negative 34. And KSP of zinc hydroxide is 3 into 10 to the power of negative 16. Aluminum hydroxide has got a much smaller KSP than zinc hydroxide. Let's look at which of these compounds have a higher solubility when we compare the KSP values. The molar solubility of aluminum hydroxide is lower than the molar solubility of zinc hydroxide because the KSP of aluminum hydroxide is smaller than the KSP of zinc hydroxide. Or in simple terms, the solution that is above aluminum hydroxide has to be saturated if you have to get a precipitate. But the molar concentration of aluminum and hydroxide ions that are present in a saturated solution of aluminum hydroxide is much smaller than the molar concentration of zinc hydroxide above the precipitate in the saturated solution. So a lower concentration of aluminum and hydroxide ions are sufficient to precipitate only aluminum hydroxide. And if you want to precipitate zinc hydroxide, the concentration of the zinc and the hydroxide ions have to be higher. The condition for precipitation of an ionic compound from its aqueous solution can be stated as the ion product should be greater than the solubility product. So in this case, by looking at the molar solubility, the ion product of aluminum hydroxide will be a very small number if it has to precipitate. On the other hand, zinc hydroxide will have a higher ion product. Therefore, the concentration of hydroxide ions should be higher to precipitate zinc as zinc hydroxide. So we have to keep the concentration of hydroxide really, really low to precipitate aluminum. We have to keep the concentration of hydroxide higher to precipitate zinc as zinc hydroxide. This can be achieved by what we call common ion effect. So what's common ion effect? 
suppression of ionization of a weak electrolyte by the addition of a strong electrolyte having a common ion with a weak electrolyte. This statement is expressing Le Chatelier's principle. But it's pretty interesting. It can help you predict the direction of the reaction, how to change the concentration, and then how to predict precipitation. That's where we're going with this. So let's try to explain common ion effect here. The reagents that we are going to choose so that by using common ion effect, we can control the concentration of the hydroxide ions in the aqueous solution, which contains aluminum ions and zinc ions. If you look at these two reagents, ammonium hydroxide and ammonium chloride, ammonium hydroxide is a weak electrolyte, so always exist in equilibrium. Ammonium chloride is a strong electrolyte. If you put it in water, it's dissociated 99.9% .9 times. So all of the ammonium chloride will change into ammonium ions and chloride ions. But ammonium hydroxide being a weak electrolyte or a weak base does not dissociate completely. So we can cause a change in equilibrium by adding a reagent which has a common ion with the weak electrolyte. So the common ion that we are choosing here is ammonium ions. Ammonium ions coming from the strong electrolyte being 100% dissociated will impact the equilibrium because we are increasing the concentration. So if we add ammonium chloride to ammonium hydroxide, the NH4 positive ions in NH4Cl will cause a shift in equilibrium of NH4OH. This shift will cause the hydroxide ion concentration to decrease. This will not allow the ion product to exceed the KSP of zinc hydroxide. So zinc hydroxide will not precipitate. Only aluminum hydroxide will precipitate. So this is the equilibrium. Ammonium hydroxide, the weak electrolyte. So if you increase the concentration of ammonium ions by adding NH4 positive, what would happen is in Le Chatelier's principle we have learned, if you increase the amount of products, the equilibrium will shift left, producing more undissociated ammonium hydroxide. If that has to happen, the hydroxide and concentration has to go down thereby decreasing the molar concentration of hydroxide ions. And in such a scenario, the ion product of zinc hydroxide will not exceed the KSP of zinc hydroxide. Therefore, it's safe to precipitate only one of the ions because aluminum hydroxide has got a very low KSP. Therefore, it will easily exceed the KSP or the ion product will easily exceed the KSP of aluminum hydroxide, thereby precipitating aluminum hydroxide only. The solution will be unsaturated with respect to zinc ions and hydroxide ions. Therefore, we can precipitate one ion at a time, and this is what we really refer to as selective precipitation. So what I explained once again written here, with this information of common ion, we can selectively precipitate aluminum hydroxide first, filter and remove the precipitate of aluminum hydroxide, and the clear liquid that we get, which is a supernatant, will now contain only zinc ions. It can be precipitated as a hydroxide if you add a strong hydroxide like uh, sodium hydroxide to increase the concentration, or we can also precipitate zinc as zinc sulfide by adding ammonium sulfide or hydrogen sulfide to the mixture. So the whole idea was to separate aluminum ions from zinc ions by precipitating them as different compounds. So we achieved the objective of selectively precipitating one ion at a given time. This is what we refer to as selective precipitation. This is used extensively in qualitative analysis. For instance, 
when you are testing water, you want to test the presence of different metal ions or, metal or anions. And we can actually use selective precipitation to precipitate one ion at a time and detect the presence of the different metals that may be present in drinking water. Not in all cases do we need to use common ion effect. Merely the knowledge of solubility product or KSP values would be good enough for actually precipitating selectively some of the ions that are present. Here is a sample question for you. Using solubility and KSP rules, how would you separate an ionic solution containing aluminum nitrate and calcium nitrate? Here, you are expected to separate aluminum ions as an aluminum compound and calcium ions as a calcium compound. That would mean it's a selective precipitation. And the second question would be, using solubility and KSP rules, how would you separate an ionic solution containing sulfate ions and chloride ions? These ions come from sodium sulfate and sodium chloride. Again, you can look at the solubility rules of compounds that are formed by combining with metal ions, for instance, lead sulfate, calcium sulfate, etc., or for chloride, like silver chloride or lead chloride, and then use that information to make a flow chart to write the sequence of steps that you would take to separate one ion at a given time. That's it for now.